This is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're dropping two videos. Uh, we're going to type uh, C.S. Joseph today. Um, a lot of people don't know if he's ENFP, ESFJ. We're going to figure out the day, and uh, we'll, we'll get that down. Um, so, uh, Personnel Database has him as an ENTP um, with a lot of votes. So, uh, we're going to see today. Um, some people say he's ENFP. Some people say he's ESFJ. I've seen fools say ESFJ. God, how stupid can you be to believe this man's a filler? I don't fucking know what you're doing. I don't know what you're reading. Some people like read shit and they misinterpret it. T.I. tricks the motherfuckers, man. But uh, we're going to get into it today and we're going to figure out what C.S. Joseph is and end all the debate. We found this interview here. So let's do it. Right, man. And 50% of our viewers are not subscribed. Uh, so if you can subscribe so we can grow the channel, um, join our Facebook group, um, self, uh, self improvement. We talk about money, we talk about uh, real estate. Uh, we talk about making you a better person um, outside of MBTI. Um, we debate things. We have a debate this Friday coming up. I'm going to try to get my ENTP brother on it. I'm going to try to get Catch on it. Um, I know Christian's going to be on it. He's an ISTP. And Dion's going to be on it. He's an ENTJ. So um, that's what we got right now. But we're going to try to open it up. I'll be asking him random questions and we'll see what happens. Should be fun. Hey, I'm a little exhausted, but hanging in there. Oh, um, God. Look at him. Hey everyone, we have another technology interview. We have uh, Chase Joseph here, CS Joseph. How's it going, bud? Hey, I'm a little exhausted, but hanging in there. I'm a little exhausted, but hanging in there, so that's SI. Um, awesome. I've been working hard. <laughs> or yeah, are yeah. they working, one of the two? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to say, uh, first off, that um, like I really appreciate uh, the work you've been doing the whole way through. You're one of the first people, I guess, on YouTube that was really starting up the typology stuff. And a lot of people I run into, um, you're like a gateway drug, I guess, for them. Like they came into typology through you. Um, you're really accessible. Um, I want to know a little bit about your history <laughs> and, and why why YouTube? And did you what was the landscape of typology at the time you started? Well, uh, the landscape of typology at the time, just there's so many people saying incorrect things. And uh, honestly. So many people saying incorrect things. So that's from a TI perspective. So let's put them a point out for TI. Honestly, the only person in YouTube that actually had any remote credibility whatsoever was Dave Powers. Um, and the only person with credibility, that'd be TE. I, I a Powers. few years ago. Yeah, a few years ago, like I watched like three of his videos. And I was like, okay, yeah, this guy, he he basically gets it for the most part, especially like from a cognitive function point of view, you know, uh, yeah. and I, I enjoyed the three videos that I watched years back, but I mean, him and I differ in a lot of ways. In some ways, we actually have a lot of similarities that most people don't even realize, but that's that's a whole other thing. But that was kind of- Talking like, about people actually realize, T.I. Landscape, but I didn't really- I didn't really enter YouTube or any of that from like a, a point of view of trying to compete with anyone like at all. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. funny because I've gotten so many asks for collabs by the other YouTubers and I've refused all of them. Like, yeah, for the you most refused part. me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I refused you probably twice. Uh, my bad. But uh, no, it's not I, good, man. I understand 100%. We, the reason why is because the team and I had a doctrine uh, that we put together. Doctrine, no, it was systematic. We have a doctrine put together. For how like we handle public appearances. Talking about how they handle it, so he's implementing a, st a structure uh, to get a little bit more control over his own. What not. And it, it was just, it was, we were more trying to focus our, you know, public appearances or me going on shows and collabing with non MBTI, non typology content. And I did a bunch of those. Like I went on Grimerica and I went on Patriot Soapbox. I did this, I did that, I did this, SI more, more. Or like all these other rando podcasts and whatnot to just right. talk about the, the science and not actually, you know, but in terms of like collabing with other YouTubers, I only did one time and that was on the Love Who channel and it was like once. <laughs> and that was interesting. But uh, he's going through a progression here. He's going through progression. He's not talking about the end product. This guy's progression. Other than that, I, I haven't really done it. And I've just kind of really, it just, it just didn't really mean much because the thing is, is that when I'm trying to explain like typology and whatnot, there's either 
a complete total agreement or there's a complete total disagreement. And it's like everyone ends up trying to ultimately turn it into a debate. And it's like, mm-hmm. I don't want to debate anyone. Like, I mean, you know, because my, my philosophy is listen to what I'm saying. My philosophy, that'd be abstract. So an abstract falls in the realms of philosophy. Okay. Don't believe what I say. Go use what I say and prove whether or not it's true or false. If you don't understand true or false, to you. how you could prove it's true or false, then come ask me questions. I'll help you out. But I'll help you out. That's fe. Okay. Other than that, like I'm trying to create an environment of self-discovery for people to just kind of understand, like understand that's ti. Like, you know, hey, here's this tool you could use, the type grid. It's better than the tests. It's like 100% accurate, provided you know how to use it. You know, yeah. Oh, that's the kicker. Provided you know how to use it. So that is a system. That it takes some skill to use. But once you do it, you'll your life will be better, trust me. And then, you know, that's kind of where it goes. But when I first started, it was not about competing or you know, being disruptive or whatever. It's more of like, I have to do this because like I was, I was going to die. I was going to die of liver failure and uh, I didn't have anything legacy oriented set up. And I'm like, well, I knew all about this and I know my son will be super good at it one day, but he's not going to be good at it because it's future focus. You're talking about the son in the future. Abstract. Because he's a very small child at this point because he's only like, you know, six years old when I started. And this guy's coming off the phone with doing a lot of extra information, beating around the bush, uh, just wordy as hell. And uh, I'm just like, well, uh, he, because he, his type is the natural type to like understand and achieve mastery with the science in general for the most part. Talking about his type, talking about what his type thinks. Okay, so that'd be T because my mentor is the same type as my son. You know, they're both INFJs. And yeah, so let's talk about that, like your, your sure. mentorship stuff, like how you got into typology. Um, and he initiated a lot of stuff there. I was initiating, he initiated a couple of points there. Got all into his son and everything, rambling. Because I guess I caught from another interview you did uh, that you were just speaking nonsense at the beginning and then one of your mentor, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, I started studying this stuff at 21, when I was 21. So I this, did this, I did that, yes, I. This was 12 years ago. So I've been doing this for like 12 years. And I, and I studied hard. I, I bought the books, you know, the official MBTI books. I read all those. Um, I did this, I did that, I did this, yes, I some more. I did a little bit of socionics reading as well. I, I actually, contrary to popular belief, I actually love socionics. I, I absolutely mm-hmm. love socionics. Um, but I'm also very critical towards the parts of it that I disagree with. But that's how I am about any system that's out there, you know. System. But uh, yeah. I started studying it at 21 in a bid to save my marriage. I was married to an ESFP, didn't really know it at the time. And I was trying so hard to do anything to figure out how to fix my marriage. It, that's, that's the whole reason I did this, is just to save my marriage. And instead of saving my marriage, what happened was I ended up understanding her and understanding, understanding like her, her needs. and her needs, that's F-E. So we got enough to go ahead and call this guy T-I-F-E. Uh, ESF, I mean, T-I-F-E. So, um, he is not an ENFP. ENFPs would be talking about external data, um, talking about what they love, what they're passionate about, um, that type of thing from an FI perspective and a TE perspective, achievements and all that. He's not really talking about that. Um, so, yeah, he's a TI user um, and he's informative. So, TI informative means NTP or NFP, okay? No, not NFP, okay? If he's TI and he's informative, that means SFJ. So we're looking at an ESFJ, ENTP, ISFJ, or INTP here, okay? And both of them are systematic, so we're not looking for that. The only difference between them is one is abstract. The NTPs are abstract, and if, uh, SFJs are concrete, okay? Um, NTPs are pragmatic, so they talk, they're a little rebellious, contrarian, 
Um, they like their own freedom. They like the ability to choose why um, SFJs are affiliated. They care about doing the right thing. They care about interclusion and stuff like that. Um, so um, we're going to try to figure out, is he an SFJ or an NTP? It's looking like he's most likely, um, he's got abstract points. So um, it's looking like he is most likely an NTP and he's progression. So that would make him an ENTP most likely. Let's keep going. And I realized there was no way impossible that I was ever going to meet her needs. And she was not, she was already not meeting my needs. And I'm just like, you know, I need to take responsibility for this. So mm -hmm. one thing led to another and we ultimately got divorced. Progression, but, progression. But we did that sooner than later because we didn't want our bad marriage to really negatively impact the children. And at least so, ever since we've made the decision to do this, the children- Negative consequences of the, uh, the uh, divorce, that'd be any on his perspective. But we already know that he's S-I-N-E, so, yeah. They've been thriving, they've been better. My daughter, she's only five, but she's got, she gets so much attention from her stepfather now, um, in a, because he's he's able to meet her emotional needs in a better way than I am, whereas I'm able to meet her perceptual needs, you know, in a better way than he is. So we it's, it's this tag team parenting thing that we do, and now my daughter's like reading two grade Same. levels ahead. Like her Formative. academic achievement is skyrocketed uh, as well as her athletic achievement as well. And my son has just gone so creative now and he's getting into music and martial arts. He's, it's, it's excellent. But, you know, most people, most people see divorce as a really, really bad thing. And yes, it is. It is a really, really bad thing. It's a really hard thing. But the way that my ex-wife and I like handled it, you know, we, we, we were able to pull it off in an equitable manner, and it was only possible because of the study. However, <laughs> well, six years later. Aggression again. Like, or five, five years later, when I was 26, I, I was working for a man. Um, See, we're going on a little journey with him. Doing engineering for him. Uh, he had me work for him at a Fortune 500 company. I was doing work there, and then he had me do all these other projects on the side, and he had another guy who was working for him. And I ended up in the Copper Building in uh, Bellevue, Washington, on the 22nd floor, delivering like a sales pitch. I was a sales engineer, you know, uh, so I, I'd focus on virtualization, VMware, whatever. And it was a sales situation, and they all cracked open some beers. It was a Friday, we were all hanging out. And uh, I, did this, we, I did this, I did that. We already know that in progression, some more. You know, uh, I'm like, hey, what do you guys? I, I did, you know, the you know that meme of like, you know, so what do you know about the MBTI? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like that awkward moment. Right. And um, and then I told them, um, you know, about cognitive functions or whatever. Well, my coworker was in the room, and he's like, and in front of everybody, he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, what? So then he got up and he started whiteboarding out why I didn't know anything, what I was talking about. And he absolutely verbally destroyed me in front of these men. And by the way, we did not get the sale because of so the who is, this, who is this? This guy became your mentor, right? Who is this guy? Uh, his name is Robert Bryant. Fantastic fellow. Uh, good old uh, Robert Bryant. Uh, he's an ESTP. Still thinks he's an ISTP to this day, but he's really an ESTP. But uh uh, but yeah, he uh, he was very critical and he just exposed me and uh, basically said, you're a charlatan. And that's what ESTPs do. They expose people for being charlatans. <laughs> and he's like, you're a charlatan and you don't even know it. And here's why. It yeah. freaked me out. <laughs> well, the following day, we were driving together out to Yakima and I didn't want to go because I'm like, this guy, is just, he's just going to destroy me again. But I went and then and he's yeah, like, experience, okay, huh? here's the situation. Uh you're homeless right now and you're still trying to figure this out, but at least you're working, but let me do you a solid because, and he told me like, you're weak and I don't respect you. <laughs> like, he told me that. And I was like, okay, uh, you know, so uh, you're talking weak. talking a first person perspective. I don't respect you and because I know you're weak and so, I don't respect you. So progression, um, ISFJ and INTPs are eliminated because they talk about the end product. Um, he's talking about the progression of everything. So we're down to ESFJ. And ENTP, okay. Likely why you have such a bad marriage is because, you know, she Ooh, obviously wow. knows 
Oh yeah, he went for Probably, it, man. Yeah, he, he went for it. I'm like, you know, as much as I want to disagree with you, I can't disagree with you. So okay, I'll listen to what you have to say. The facts line up, Ti. Can't disagree with you because you're true. And he's like, all right, well, here's the deal. I will teach you, but you need to listen, and you need to listen well. I'm like, okay. So we made this arrangement where I became his apprentice, essentially. We made an arrangement. And why is he a mentor? Where did he get all this from? <sighs> he got it from my other mentor. Right, uh, he went yeah, he got it from my INFJ mentor. So he mm -hmm. actually studied under my INFJ mentor, which is interesting because my INFJ mentor is significantly younger than him. But he right. actually got it from my... Can't say his name? No, I, I really can't out of respect for him. Um, I have said it a few times on my YouTube channel. Some people can, can you know, pick it up. But the reason why is, is that I don't want to disrespect him because I, he values his privacy extremely, as most INJs do, you know. I don't want to disrespect him. So, but... Um, and where did he get it from then? See, that's the thing. I don't really know actually where he got it from, but I do have a theory. I do okay. have a theory. My theory. I do have a theory that be abstract. Is is that he actually um, he heavily? I believe this is my theory, and I don't know if this is true. Other than I swear to God, a, a uh, freaking ENTPs always kind of like preference you if they don't know something true. This is my belief. But I don't know if this is true. When they don't know 100%, they would tell you something like that. And him being an autodidact, and he researched Kiersey and Barron's, and because he did a lot of uh, class projects in high school, just because he read all these books in high school and did papers on them. Uh, but he really, it didn't start to really click for him, I think, until potentially, this is where it gets to very theoretical, uh, theoretical potentially where he started, uh, I think he was watching EJ R&D a lot. Um, and I think EJ R&D uh, in his YouTube channel before he disappeared, um, you know, EJ R&D's real name is Jay McKee. And Jay uh, was doing a lot of work on YouTube uh, talking about these things. And Jay was somewhat aware of the Berenzian approach, approach as well as socionics. And my INFJ mentor studied socionics uh, pretty heavily as well as Barron's and Kiersey, uh, Montgomery, Hunziker. Uh, John Beebe, uh, I actually got introduced to John Beebe through my INFJ mentor, not my ESTP one. And I see, okay. So you actually yeah. met with John Beebe then? Yeah, actually, I, it's funny. I met with John Beebe in person about, gosh, what was it? A year ago, nine months ago? Or it was like, no, it was September of last year or August of last year, one of those two. I met him in person. It, it was it was amazing. Um it's weird because when I walked in the room, like he instantly knew who I was. I was like, whoa, okay. That was yeah. not, uh, cause I wasn't planning on showing up. It's kind of last minute. Say again. This guy's on his own rant. In touch with John Beebe? Doctor? Maybe? Mo moderately. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I do have his email and I can contact him, but like, I, I, I even, I even bought his book when I was there and he actually signed it and whatnot. But like on the way out from, uh, from his presentation, which was, it was an exquisite presentation. It was, it was excellent. Um, mm -hmm. On the way out, like, uh, he came up to me and he's like, you know, um, you know, and he's just thanking me for what I was doing and and uh, helping people understand cognitive attitudes and whatnot. And, and, in, and in front of like, uh, one of his team members who he had there, he's like, you know, oh, this is this is this is Chase, C.S. Joseph. He's he's my colleague, and I was like, whoa, hello. <laughs> you know? So it was yeah. kind of cool to get that First kind of recognition perspective. Um, from Dr. Beebe. Um, but um, yeah, I've I've always enjoyed his work, especially when it was first presented to me um, by by my INFJ mentor. Yeah. So I'm really curious about um, how you why you chose his model over all the other models to start working from, I guess. And then also, like, what you think about archetypes in general, like um, the archetype model in general. Okay, yeah, sure. So the reason why I chose Dr. Beebe is because, so let's let's talk about how um, we have inductive reasoning versus deductive reasoning, right? 
So in order, uh, the MBTI, because it's like a test, the letter dichotomies, whatnot, that's all based on inductive reasoning. And mm -hmm. you have people out there like, for example, Ty Lopez, he's, he's an ENFP. He's one of the most um, critical of, of MBTI in general. He's telling people, take the hex code test, take big five tests, ignore MBTI. And he's, he has this huge list of criticisms about them. And the thing is, is I agree with his criticisms. He's actually correct about it. Yeah, I and think it, everyone in the community would agree that MBTI is not the system that we want. I yeah. Mean, we're, on, we're on the cognitive functions here. We all know that MBTI. And I agree because it's a team It's just an approximation and not a very good one at the moment. It, it, yeah. You said it exactly. It's all about approximation. And I, my mentors and I became very frustrating. So. So we had to make an assumption at first, but then testing out the assumption or the hypothesis, basically. But the hypothesis at the beginning was systematic. Is that the type grade is 100% true. It is pure fact and you cannot, it, it, it so is. He started with, this is fact and this is where we're going. Okay. And then to, they'd have to disprove it. So I would say that's in the realm of abstract as well. Okay, so this guy's ENTP. Um, See, it's Joseph's ENTP. Okay, what we know is very early on with that he's a TIFE user. Um, obviously, uh, talks about um, if this and that um, mentality. Um, he wants to help people. Um, he's an SINE user. Talked about like the first thing he said was, "Oh, I forget exactly what he said, but oh, I'm not feeling good or something like that." Given out his SI experience, he talks from a first-person perspective. Um, he talks about progression. He doesn't really talk about pure end product or outcomes. Um, he's abstract, so he's talking about philosophies, theories, um, theoreticals, hypotheticals, um, and he's initiating. Um, we did say he's systematic. Uh, he talks about systems and structures or whatnot, um, how to implement them. So yeah, C.S. Joseph is an ENTP. I don't know how fucking idiots get him as an ESFJ. This guy's not. This guy's not concrete. This guy's not concrete. Um, he didn't really say much pragmatic stuff there, but I mean, he's talking about doing what's effective. Um, so you can put that under the pragmatic um, umbrella if you want to. Um, he's not filled. He's not talking about doing the right thing. He didn't talk about doing the right thing at all. Um, but yeah, this is a Mongolian mindset, and yeah, CSJ is a ENTP and.